Howdy folks, my name is David from RC Scale Models and today we're going to be taking a look at this AFV Club 135 scale Matador or AEC Matador. Let's take a look at what we get inside this one. So this is pretty standard box for AFE club, pretty standard stuff. On this side uh, we have kit number AF35239, it's built up model, this one is in the desert scheme, um, I think it's Tun Tunisia, somewhere like that area. Um, this side, there's that desert one again. You can do one, I'll get it depicted on the box art with the camouflage, uh, I'll probably end up doing that one. So worksheet is loaded with plastic as standard. There is some rubber tires and stuff. So we'll take a closer look at this. So here's your worksheet. Uh, this kit's been around for a while now. I've had this in my stash for quite a bit of time. Um, so there isn't many kits out here that's taken my fancy. So I'm just going to do some reviews on some of the stuff I've got in my stash. Um, so look, we're going to take a look at this one. There's a little bit of history on the vehicle. If you wish to read it, pause it. Um, first page, warning symbols, everything to be pay attention to. Basic colour call out, you've got Mr. Hobby, uh, or all the guns colours. Humbrol, Revell, Life Colour. If you don't use those, you can have to use references. Some of the Matador vehicles that the um, company makes. Um, and I didn't realise they did actual armour cars. Um, but the history basically they started off making uh, buses and then obviously when the war time came around production changed and they had to make armoured vehicles and stuff and um, that's a definitely interesting one with the tracks if I could definitely find a kit of that that would be interesting to build it's completely different you've got a normal one like we're going to build now as this kit we've got a flatbed armoured versions pretty cool stuff So straight off the bat, we are working with what looks like a lower section of an engine, possibly. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, it looks like a gearbox, maybe, of some sort. This section here is to do with kind of a winch assembly. You see, you do get some little bit of cable to go, go along. Um, and then here, we look, looks like we have parts of suspension arms and detail parts. And here we have the lower chassis both sides of the rail, a couple of support brackets and then the winch and lower section of the engine by the looks of things can be all built up to make the lower section section which would be here and then we have some more pulleys for the winch looks like either oxygen tanks or fuel tanks I'm not sure which is this section here um, I'm not too familiar with the stuff on the vehicle these look like leaf springs to me these parts I don't know have some support gussets at the side um there's like more leaf springs and stuff like that these could be fuel tanks and these could be oxygen tanks um so i'm not sure again tons more detail parts all going on as you work your way through so it looks like axles and stuff drive uh drive train and drive arms or is it ax their axles as well is it drive no um Drive shaft, that was it, that's what I'm thinking. A um, couple of more details at the front, which looks like I don't know actually what they are, but they're on the front of the vehicle. Something to do with the bumper. Um, exhaust system, more drive axles, and then your exhaust system going in the axles. Then we have your wheel assembly going in, um, and brakes. So brakes, wheel, and then tyres, and then the uh, the ends of the wheels like the caps that section is all complete we have a couple of lights going in and then turn your attention to the lower bed so you possibly could make the uh, flatbed version out of this maybe i'm not sure on the underside you've got all your support gussets for the lower bed i know on the real vehicle a lot of the uh, bed and the side rails is actually made of wood this is the side rail, it's like a spare wheel. 
So these are all the side panels, toolboxes and stuff like that. This little bracket here, you make a photo etch, I believe. You get a couple of resin jerry cans within the kit that can go on. Fenders, more side rails, the spare wheel goes in the back. We've got what looks like a battery box in here. And then it goes onto a couple of bench seats and then internal parts for a couple of guys to sit in the back. Um, we've got one long bench seat and two small seats. This front seat here sits over the battery box on top of it. Uh, bulkhead, the rear side part at the back of the vehicle, a couple of tow cables, a couple of detail hooks and stuff. And then this section here makes up the roof and the side supports sections of optional parts are going in. It's kind of like a canvas um, top, kind of. Um, then it's inside the chassis. Uh, this is the cab, lower floor. We've got the uh, pedals and steering wheel and stuff going in. And levers for handbrake and winch and whatever else it does. I know the engine on the mat door sits in between this uh, little channel part. So there is no engine. Uh, so, as I was saying, the, the engine sits in this housing, so there is no actual engine, there's only half of engine, which is a bit of a shame, but then again you probably wouldn't see it. Uh, we have the bulkhead of the cab, more levers, and part of the seat assembly, this all gets detailed up, some more internal parts, another seat, some panels, so this is all detailed parts inside the cab area. Fenders going on the bottom. Some support brackets down here. Remember it's the uh, front firewall and the windows assembly. The dash going in. Glass. More glass. Glass open or closed option. So they flip forward like this. Um, you've got the wind wipers going in as well. The roof going in. We have this front part of the grill going in. Which is photo etch I believe. This makes up the cab. You can have the doors going on, open or closed option, which is a nice touch again. And then once you've done all three assemblies, you can attach your cab and rear deck onto the chassis. And it's the uh, completed vehicle. Uh, this section here, the, the roof or canvas top bit, they're asking for no glue because it's an optional part if you want to put it on or off. And then here is your sprue map of everything you should get in the kit um, and then this part is for replacement parts but that's uh, <clears throat> from Taiwan only or wherever the manufacturer is from first paint scheme is that desert one I was on about which is a uh, colour called out FS33531 and Soul colour which is the, the it's like khaki basically um, the camouflage version which is here which is they're called out for khaki green and flat black which is actually incorrect uh, or it's the closest colours if you want to do it right but if you want the correct colours AK do them which will be the green colour is from AK which is CC15 which is the olive drab colour the um, army use and then the brown, or sorry not the brown, but the black colour is CC14, which is the blue-black colour. It's very similar to NATO black. It's like that charcoal, blacky-grey colour. So they're the two colours I'll be using. If you've been following on the Bedford build, the Bedford gun truck, they're in the same two colours. They're, they're going to be in the same two colours. And then we have this one here, which is the RF version, which is in the uh, two desert colours with the... Uh, this colour, so the colours for this if you want to do it in AK so according to my reference material for the sand colour would be this one from AK would be the BSC number 61 which is light sand from the, uh, the British which is this colour for the black is the uh, standard CCC14 blue black and as for the uh, khaki or cell colour which would be this one here, which is BS, 
number 34, which is that greeny colour for the RAF. That's the closest reference material and colours I have from AK. So we go through the kit now, in no particular order, we just work our way through the bags. So it comes in this yellowy plastic. Um, Might need to put a new blade in my knife actually, it's getting a bit blunt. So this very first sprue. So the very first sections up the top here are the panels for the side with all the wood grain effect. I don't know here how well you can see that. It's nicely done. All these funny little pins on the outside either where the ejector pins are for so they've done it so it's nicely done so there's no nasty ejector pins on the, all the detail parts so it's all nicely crisp and clean especially these side panels the only time you're going to get ejector pins is on parts that are not visible it's inside the fuel tanks top of the roof that kind of thing even the, this section for the cab is all crisp and clean without any ejector pins they've done them on these spots no nasty ejector pins on this section here so they definitely thought about it, AFE, Clay, uh, V, sorry, do think about their way they do their kits and they do go together nicely. They can be a little bit uh, high on, on their part count sometimes, but they are a detail kit overall. Um, so as I say, these are the side panels, structural parts, part of your cab. This is the roof, this was the fuel tank, we have the detail parts at the bottom and the side. So as I say, nicely done. This is sprue B. This one here. This is sprue um double I. Strangely enough, yeah, that's a weird one, having double I. So this is the uh, canvas top part of the uh, back. So it has metal structural for ribs, but the actual centerpiece is like a hard, hard canvas. Um, these are the side panels, this is part of the uh, back. This is part of the bulkhead for the cab. Again, no nasty ejector pins. They've done these extra pins on the outside, so it maintains its detail. Strangely enough, these are all moulded as nice strong parts without any ejector pins on them. Um, these are the side windows for the uh, back. Another detail part. These structural parts look like for the lower section of the uh, back of the deck. These are the boxes for storage and this one here I believe is for the jerry can. Here's your lights. So it's nicely done, nicely detailed. So again you can just about make out the wood grain effect. I don't know how well you can see it on camera but I can see it quite well in person. You do get a little bit of a marble effect but that will soon disappear when you've got paint on it. Here's those canvasy windows, storage boxes, those structural parts. This lower section is part of the dry train, suspension, that kind of thing. So this is the lower section of the engine. So that's all you're going to get is basically the oil pan part by the looks of things. Um, but nothing else. So here's that front grill. There is further extra to go on the front part of that. Uh, must be in the bottom of the box somewhere. These springs again. Nicely done with those pins on the outside so there's no nasty ejector pins on there. Um, there is a slight burr seam you're going to have to take care of but that's easy done 
part of the uh, axle assembly. This may be part of the gearbox, I'm not sure. Here are your drive, drive parts, detail parts. All small detail parts as well. So nicely done. This is sprue eye on its own. So here we have your two rails for your um, framing for your um, chassis. This is part of the bulkhead assembly. Strangely though, even though this is inside the cab, they've got ejector pins and you would have thought they would have not done that, which is a bit of a shame really. But then again, where these ejector pins go, I think there are a couple of boxes go over those, so it is not, they're not going to be visible. This section here is inside the cab as well, so the driver sits here, passenger sits here. The engine would sit inside this box, hence why you don't really get an engine because you're not going to see it. There should be a cover on another sprue somewhere that sits over the top of this. Um, again, there's the back deck, all nicely done. Again, they've done those pins all around the outside so there's no nasty ejector pins on top and bottom. All your detail parts are going to go on here. So your boxes, um, fenders and all that kind of thing. Again, they've done it with the doors. So it's nicely done, no nasty pins. There are some ejector pins on the inside of the uh, framing, but being that's on the inside, I don't think you're really going to see them. These sections are support for underneath your flatbed, or the back of the deck. There are a couple of ejector pins on those, but again, they're quite shallow, should be easy to take care of. And this is spruce C, so it's nicely done. This small bag contains the clear. Um, I wish they wouldn't have stuck it in that bag with the other one. No, oh, sorry, they have it is separately. It's just sellotape. I'm not really going to get this out of the bag. This is clear windows, so it's going to be perfectly flying because they're just flat glass. Again, these detail parts is for inside the cab, uh, your steering wheel, and all your levers and your seats. There's the cover to go over the top of the uh, area of where the engine would be. So these are just detail parts in general. Another section of roof. So there is a couple of differences. There's your jerry cans. Another bag of windows. Looks like I've got two of these. Is that the same? No, it's not. So there are some more windows. Again, flat windows. They're going to be no problem. Inside this bag, there's going to be some detailed parts. Are these two sprues the same? A and A. So yeah, so there's two of these identical sprues. So we have wheels. This looks like part of the uh, brake assembly and whatever drum brakes type thing. Detail parts. This looks like all detail parts for the lower section supports. These are those little small tanks part of your exhaust maybe um, without looking at instructions I'm not going to remember what all these parts are but they are nicely detailed those wheels are done nicely with all the bolts these are all those detailed parts looks good to me Here, again, 
strangely we've got another roof and another cab section and a couple of more detail parts so there's definitely different variants out there so which ones I need I'm not sure again until I actually need to go through the instructions but you are getting a couple of different types so this giant bag has got tools in it as well fenders boxes so this is sprue D so we have boxes at top looks like brackets not sure what they are but it's very fine detail parts especially up here more detail parts there's a part of a pickaxe not sure what that is more detail parts here these I don't know these are detail parts as well we have a spade another tool some fenders nicely done um, no nasty jet pins on them neither we'll take uh, some pictures at the end of all the sprues so you can have a pause the video and have a good look if you wish um, so there's two of these as well So we have another fender, so again, so there'll be two of these because it's another sprue the same, this is sprue F. So there'll be two of these, two of these, two of these, two of these, and so on. These look like part of the uh, seat assembly. A couple of boxes, support arms, I think this is for the roof. Little tie downs. So if they are tie downs for the uh, um, roof and stuff you might want to use some string to mimic some rope and wrap around it just to make it a bit more detailed maybe another uh, seat these could be part of the backrest I'm not sure but again it's nicely done can't see any nasty jet to pins in awkward places so yeah definitely done these are a couple of eyes for towing grab handles Rubber tyres, pack of five, the truck contains four wheels for, for its vehicle and then one spare. So they are quite a squidgy rubber tyre, some people like them, some people don't, some people prefer resin. Um, I'm on the fence sometimes, sometimes. I prefer to go the resin route and sometimes I use the rubber it all depends how well it's done and if it's accurate with the tread and size and if it's stuff like that but these look pretty good to me we have got a seam line down the middle you can either leave that or remove it if you leave it it means it's going to look like a pretty much like a new tyre or you can sand the hell out of it so it's a worn down tyre sadly there are no oh yes they are I don't know how well you can see that but it has got Dunlop written on the tyre so how did it manage to pull that off without licensing unless they have got the license for it but they are branded tyres which is a nice touch typical standard like tractor type tread on these vehicles and last couple of pieces in this small bag your decals, your rope, and further which. I'll say I'm not sure how well these decals are going to be because I've had this kit for a little while. Hopefully they're not gone off or they're not bad. Because I don't know how difficult it is to get replacement markings for the, the um, mat door. I'm not sure. 
sadly I've got this piece of plastic in here and I don't know what this is let me take that off so I've got these funny looking square pieces of plastic don't know what that's for we will have to go back in instructions to work that out photo etch so you have your front grille here's the uh, center pieces for your jerry cans but strangely enough the jerry cans that come with the kit are resin so and this is some plastic ones I'm missing I'm not sure um, then we've got a couple of detail parts and tie downs so nicely done standard um, black nylon cable to mimic rope or, or tow cable that will work I prefer it to be in black not the uh, standard stuff that to me give you sometimes in white which is awkward decals don't look too bad um, like I say I'm ho hoping they're gonna work and they're not gonna be bad they don't look yellow to me they look still crisp and clean and sharp in color um, they are 2004 decals so that is coming up was that eight years now eight years old um, so decals do have a lifespan but they look pretty good to me